are going to be applying for the upcoming graduate scholarship, here are some tips. So can you give like your advice for personal statement? Oh. Like, what did you write mm. in your personal statement that you felt that, oh, maybe this was what you know, touched the scholarship panel? So for personal statement, I broke it up into different sections. The very first section, I talk about the general idea on why I desire to go to graduate school. Mm -hmm. And then the second section, I talk about uh, why career. Why do I choose career? What can I do in career? And the third one, I kind of tie all this together, together. to provide a linkage as to what am I going to do in career? How does a GKS factor into my plans and things like this? And why um, career is the ideal location for me mm. for graduate school? So like you gave like detailed like plan of mm. like what you wanted to do. Mm. So the very first section is quite uh, idealistic. I want to do this. <laughs> and the second one is more uh, practical. And the last one is like summary. Mm, uh, kind like of a very good. brief uh, to tie everything in together. Okay. Yeah. So how about your statement of purpose? Because statement of purpose is something that I think a lot of like my subscribers they are like not sure what to write about. The very first uh, chapter, I remember I wrote something along the lines of a quote, which my professor told me. Oh, everyone starts with a quote. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this is quite a personal quote. Okay, okay. Actually, let me share with you guys. <laughs> he asked me one question before during uh -huh. lecture. He said, "Hey Matthew, why are you doing NTU?" Then I said, "It's to learn from you, professor." He said, "No, man, no." <laughs> It is for you and me to generate knowledge together. Wow! Boom. Deep, 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 deep. <laughs> so I wrote that quote down and I said that I want to generate knowledge mm -hmm. and help other people as well. And I, of course, I wrote about my research interests and how um, career is actually going to help me further this interest. Mm. So like mm. your statement of purpose, did you mainly talk about your research topic? Research topic as well and then why you have the necessary aptitude to uh, succeed in this GKS. Mm. So you kind mm. of like proof your mm. worth to mm. the scholarship panel. And what you did in uh, during your undergrad days, that makes you uh, stand out like if you're a research assistant. Ah, were like you this. a research assistant? Ah, oh. oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, so he has like extra points. <laughs> okay, then how about your future plan after study? Future plan, I broke it up into uh, the long-term goals and the short-term goals. So the long-term goals would be uh, less than five years and long-term goals would be long-term. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I, I wrote about how uh, GKS can actually be a good and effective stepping stone towards the achievement of these goals. Mm -hmm. So it's not like what what you want to do after GKS, but how GKS can actually help you mm -hmm. to uh, achieve those goals. And of course, you have to list down the goals that should be closely aligned to your uh, graduate studies if possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then how about your long-term ones? Did you say like, oh, I'm going to stay in Korea or like, mm -hmm. if you're going to go back to your home country, did you say anything like that? Yeah, yeah be as uh, detailed as possible. Like, eventually, you still have to relate to how GKS can actually help you achieve those uh, long-term goals. Mm -hmm. So once you mention about the short-term goals, use that to add on and then um, build on your long-term goals. In the guidelines, they actually mentioned that if you have like topic, I think th four and above, you get like higher evaluation points because he's different, okay? Matthew is a different leak from like normal people. So if you have research um, experience, do you think mm. it would be beneficial? I, I think so long as you have something that makes you stand out and you can actually prove your case that you are an effective candidate for this GKS. So be it the language, uh, the Korean language, or it is something like research skills or even something like entrepreneurial skills. So long as it's something that can actually make you dazzle the uh, dazzle. interviewers, uh -huh. I think it's going to be really beneficial for your case. So for you, what do you think was the point that dazzled the scholarship panel? I was very hard on the fact that I was a research assistant. I did a lot of the uh, research work for the different professors. I also participated in conferences in helping. Mm -hmm. So I think that mm, gave me an additional edge uh, against other people. Mm -hmm. Not Joe. Joe Gray. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta stress the fact that I did not have a Korean. Yeah, he had zero like Korean knowledge or like mm. zero Korean like proficiency test. He didn't go for any like speech contest. Mm. I mean that was what I did. So he is the case of like pure like academia. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> like just academic skills. So he is like the perfect example. Okay, so moving on. Tips for interview. Oh. You, do you remember your interview? <laughs> I did, I did. Okay, okay, so. Interview was uh, very nerve wracking for me. Uh, I was like shaking. Really? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, uh, you know, the Korean custom is like, don't sit until they ask you to sit, right? True, true. So I stood there and then it's like, hey, you can sit down. <laughs> so I, I sat down. <laughs> and I was so nervous, like, sitting on my, okay. on my hands. So the questions uh, that they were asked is closely aligned to your mm. major. I did my major in NTU, in Public Policy and Global Affairs. So they ask questions really pertaining uh, towards that uh, mm -hmm. area. So, and to the left it was the researcher, in the middle is the Korean teacher, and to the right is the secretary. 
of the was, embassy. That was my yeah, setup. I think it's the same. They asked, they asked me questions like, how do you fix the nuclear crisis in the Korean Peninsula? And why did the Hanoi summit fail? And asked me to forecast the next uh, Singapore general election. Wow, yours was pure academia uh -huh. questions. Wow, right. okay, okay. They will also look at your statement of purpose mm -hmm. and they will mm -hmm. ask questions from there. Like for mm -hmm. example, they ask like, if you're going on an academic path, why didn't you choose to go to the US? So of course, be ready for it. Um, did you prepare for your interview like at home? Did you, like, I, I actually googled like some questions uh, but I wasn't prepared for like the nuclearization <laughs> crisis or uh, Hanoi <laughs> Tamil oh, But don't worry because uh, they'll be asking in accordance to your field So mean to say you do have the necessary knowledge and the know-how to actually tackle these questions So just be confident and uh, explain your course and they will actually see how confident you are mm -hmm. And this will actually prove how an effective candidate you are to Korea mm. as well mm. Did they ask you about your Korean? Because they should know that you don't uh, have any knowledge in Korean. They, they did ask me to introduce myself. In Korean? In Korean. Okay. So I did have a uh, kind of fixed introduction which so I was So what about yours? 안녕하세요. 저는 Matthew Mida. That's it? Something like this. Oh, okay, okay. So, no, no, no. Actually, after I finished this Korean, right, it was like, mm, okay, like go on, go on. But no more. Like, <laughs> it's like, it was... Stop. <laughs> awkward silence. But don't worry, don't worry. Um, just be confident and if you know your stuff, you know your stuff and there's a reason why they shortlist you for the interview. It means that you pass the preliminary rounds. But I think it is also important like for you even if you don't have any Korean to prepare that introduction. Mm. Because I think after all you're coming to Korea. So obviously even if you have zero knowledge like Matthew, you should always just prepare like a short one and like just kind of impress them that oh mm. you actually have the heart to go and learn some Korean, right? And you will, you will definitely have to learn it, if not you, I mean, since you are going to the mandatory language program as well.